us a child is born, to us a son is given. The purity and suppleness in a baby fills the heart with happiness, makes the body leap with joy, drives all cares and concerns away, and invokes a feeling of unconditional love. How much more a baby that is God incarnate, born to save the world, born to show the way, born to die for our sins, and died to give us fullness of life and life eternal. This blessed evening, let us detach ourselves of all cares and worries and allow the spirit of music and singing to take us on a journey, celebrating the birth and being of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Almighty God abides in us always, but it is up to us to be in tune with Him. Prayer helps us to tune into God as we begin this carol evening. Let us align ourselves in the love and grace of God. May I invite Reverend John Guest to lead us in the opening prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father and most gracious God, we thank you that we can meet in this place and make it glad with our songs and hymns and carols of praise. And as we do so, may we go in heart and in mind, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And Father God, we pray that as we do, we might know the wisdom of the Magi, the humility of the shepherds, and the adoration of the angels. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us in this place, and all who gather with us to share in this service of praise. And may we too come to that manger and kneel before the one who is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, for it is in his name that we pray, even Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Let us all stand and join the choir in singing, Hark! The herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King.
I now call upon Mr. Thomas Abraham to present the welcome address. Our distinguished guest, Right Reverend Dr. John Pembleth, Bishop of Bradville, Reverend John Guest of St. Margaret's Parish Church, and members of the congregation, it's my privilege to welcome you this evening's carol service on behalf of Harmony in Christ. Harmony in Christ is a group of mixed voices from different church denominations, originally from Kerala, India, now settled in the UK. We practice in West London. Our passion for choral singing with deep-rooted Christian conviction brought us together as a choir to spread the message of the gospel through our singing. Our members are predominantly from Reformed Oriental Orthodox churches that have full communion with the Anglican Church. We are indeed honored and blessed to have Bishop John as our chief guest this evening. It was with great pride and joy we celebrated your consecration as the Bishop of Bradville, a historic moment in the annals of Indian history and Anglican Church history. More so because Bishop John also originates from Kerala, the land where St. Thomas the Apostle reached in 52 AD with the Gospel. Bishop John rejigged his diary to accommodate our request. I know for a fact that his is a very, very busy schedule because he's able to email me only well past midnight, burning the midnight oil. <laughs> Reverend John Guess, the vicar of St. Margaret's Parish, your warmth and Christian love fills our heart with joy. You have opened the doors of the church so that we could have the celebration here tonight. We are indeed happy and blessed that you are here with us this evening. Members of the St. Margaret's Parish Church, we welcome you into your own church. It is such joy to see you all here this evening. We have many in the congregations who have traveled long distances and some are still traveling and hoping to come and celebrate this evening with us. Your presence invigorates us and fills us with joy. We also welcome viewers who will join us later this month when this carol service will be telecast into homes in Europe and India, and also to all who will be reached over the net and over mobile apps. We hope this evening is one of great joy and excitement as we celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas. As we hear the great story unfold here tonight through carols, readings, and message, I pray that each of us will experience the awe and mystery of the incarnation. God made human in Jesus, the light of the world, the light shines and the darkness cannot overcome. As we grow from here, we have that light to take with us and the peace that comes from above to carry with us in this Christmas celebration and beyond. So we come together as family of God in our Father's presence and to celebrate the great festival of Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Thomas Abraham. The first lesson will now be read by Meldon Murby. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, 
Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace. There will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Almighty Lord will accomplish this. Here ends the lesson. A Christmas carol we sing every year, which is the angel's annunciation to the shepherds. This song fully captures the image where in the darkness of the night, their fear struck shepherds on hearing the glad tidings are filled with joy and rejoicing. This carol dates back to 1703, written by Nahum Tate. There are two compositions of this song, the old Winchester and the Georg Friedrich Hend. We will now listen to the Hend composition of While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks by Night. came down at Christmas. Love, all lovely, love divine. Jesus is love, and love should be the key to human existence. And we should consider divine love as the essential quality of being. Our next song, Love Came Down at Christmas.
Every bird that chirps away at the break of dawn does so because the Creator put a song in their hearts. Each bird is heaven's high and holy muse. They are a reminder that God has given us a song that we may sing his praise. This the next sorry, the next is a Malayalam rendition that expresses the desire to hear the melodious cuckoo bird sing an offering of praise to the Saviour in all its gladness and delight. Malayalam song Kuku Ni Padi Duga. Oh, yeah. 
Lesson is taken from Luke chapter 1, 26 to 33. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 33. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to marry, um, pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of J David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and, um, and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Here ends the second lesson. The daylight is fading. Our next song is a melodious lullaby filled with emotions of love and affection as the angels in the heavenly realms watch the little child cradled to sleep. third lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 to 23 Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 to 23 now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took a, took place in this way when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph but before they lived together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit her hus husband Joseph becoming a righteous man and unwilling to ex expose her to public disgrace planned to dismiss her quietly but just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 
She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a child, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Here ends the third lesson. Let us all join in singing Away in a Manger. On behalf of Harmony in Christ, it is my great pleasure and honor to welcome the speaker of this evening, Right Reverend John Perimbalath, who will be delivering the Christmas message on the first day of Advent. I think Mr. Thomas Abraham in his welcome speech has aptly spoken about Right Reverend John Perimbalath. I've written down something as well and I'd like to share that. Um, right, Reverend John Perimblat, when we think about you, it's a mixed feeling of pride and humility. Pride because the name, Right, Reverend Dr. John Perimblat, Bishop of Bradwell. Needless to say more, the accomplishment, accolades, personified in his name itself. I browsed Wikipedia, YouTube, write-ups, and there is so much, yet so little time. Pride also because he is from India, and more importantly, for all my fellow Malayalis present here, he hails from a Syrian Christian family in Kerala. This could also mean that there might be some undiscovered family links. Humility because he came to this wonderful country where the church, the people, the society welcomed him, his family, his work, and acknowledged him and respected him for his ministry. Humility, because he came to this country with a purpose. And for all of us to witness this purpose unravel and taking shape is indeed witnessing God's great work. Right Reverend John Perimbalath is married to Jesse, a mathematics teacher, and they have a daughter, Anugraha, a medical student. Dear Right Reverend John Perimbalath, 
we are so happy to have you in our midst. And on behalf of everyone like me who are eagerly waiting to hear from you, I welcome you to share from the word of God. Where is God when we really need him? Where is God when we suffer? Where is God when we feel we are abandoned? These are not new questions. Each of us at some stage of our life must have asked that question, where are you, God? God seems to be so distant, so far away. I have heard that question in 24 years of my ministry several times. Some of them I can never forget, the situations in which that particular question was asked. One that stayed with me for the last two years was when I was engaging with a group of young Syrian Christians, proper Syrian Christians, not Indian Syrians. They are, these ones are from Syria. Okay. A group of young Christians from Syria who had to leave their country to escape the violence there. I met them in Copenhagen. I listened to them. Most of them were abused on the way. They escaped sheer violence in their own country, looking for a safe space somewhere in the world. In their travel to Europe, they went through situations that cannot ever be narrated. All of them were abused in some way, boys and girls, in their early 20s. They suffered a lot. And when I was listening to them, one of them, a young lady, asked me that question. Father, where was God when we needed him? Where was God? But possibly, the message of Christmas is that he is right where we are. You find the three wise men being led to a particular home and they find a child, not a baby, a child growing in their midst. That child had been through all sorts of circumstances. That child had to run away from the place where he was born to Northern Africa, Egypt, from Asia to Africa. And even when he came back, parents were worried about his safety, and so they couldn't go to the place where they wanted to go. They were displaced. Like many displaced people in the world, many of the refugees and asylum seekers in the world, many people who are troubled and persecuted, this baby suffered everything. And that is God. That is God. Christmas talks to us about a God who suffers alongside us. Christmas talks to us about a God who is vulnerable. A God who came down just to be like us and suffered human life in all its extreme situations. Where do we look for God? We have an understanding of God sitting somewhere up in the heavens. He's sitting somewhere there 
an all-powerful God, and he somehow watches over us, judges over us, a totalitarian God. But may I invite you to see God in a new light, to see God with human face, and that is Christmas, an invitation to see God with a human face. He is there, suffering like each one of us. We are not talking about a God who stays away from human life. We are talking about a God who is very much there in a very ordinary, messy, dirty circumstances. It's all about getting our hands and feet dirty. And that's what God was doing. So that is my first reflection for you, seeing God in a new light. God is very much suffering alongside us. Christmas is an invitation to look at God afresh. But then secondly, Christmas is also inviting us to look at ourselves differently. We the human beings. I work with young people, both in the church and in the universities, and I find sometimes they consider themselves as their enemies. We are our worst enemies. We are afraid of ourselves, our emotions, what our body is capable of. We suffer from self-esteem, Sometimes we have a very bad understanding of ourselves as human beings. So many of us would love to somehow go past this life, the life in flesh, and get to heaven where you won't have to worry about our human life. But if God became flesh, if God took our flesh, blood, and bones, just like us, it cannot be bad. God sanctified our humanity by becoming one of us. The message of Christmas is one of affirmation. It is about affirming our human nature. It is about affirming what God has created us to be, being human, authentically human. That is our calling. So Christmas is an invitation to look at ourselves afresh, affirming our human life, understanding ourselves as gift of God. And that is where God manifests his glory. It is in your human flesh, in your human form as you are, with all your weaknesses, with all your illness. That is where God reveals his glory. God became flesh. He affirmed our humanity. We were created in the image of God. And that's where the story begins in the Bible. And it was good. And Christmas is about redeeming that again and reaffirming. Saying that, you don't believe that? The only way to actually prove that is me becoming one like you. God offers a possibility for us to be authentically human in this world. The third reflection is about the world, the world in which we live. Many Christians have a very negative understanding of the world. We don't want to live in this world. Our aim is to somehow get to the other world, 
So our religion is very much otherworldly, centered around the world somewhere else. When I was young, I was influenced by the music of Jim Reeves. So that song where he sings, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through, treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. That was great. But when I grew up in my Christian faith, I realized that is absolutely rubbish. That's not biblical. This world is my home. This is the world that God so loved. And this is the world to save which he came as a human being. So Christmas is an invitation for us to feel at home in this world. We have a mission here. We have a task here. God has placed us here with a job to do. To make this world a better place. To share the love of God. The good news we all share and believe. And it is this world where God has sent us into. Christmas, in that sense, is an affirmation of our world. Let us not be too otherworldly. Leave the other world to God. You can't do anything about the world beyond your grave. That's God's business. But Christmas is the story which tells about a God who loved the world, and because of that love, he became so vulnerable, and he became a human being, and suffered just like us. And if God so loved this world, what right do you have to hate it? Let us love this world, and the humanity inhabiting this world, that is where God's glory is revealed. That's where we have a job to do. That is where we have a mission to accomplish. And once we finish that, God will deal with that. And God will know what is best for us. So let me just summarize with those three thoughts for you to take home. Christmas is all about knowing God afresh, seeing God with a human face, seeing God as vulnerable, just among us, going through our own circumstances. Secondly, it is about affirming ourselves as human beings, because God became one of us. Life as a human being, is worth living. And it is in God's plan that we lead our life as ordinary human beings, authentically human. And thirdly, Christmas invites us to understand God's world, the world as the place where he has placed us. To love that world, love the creation, love the humanity, and fulfill God's mission in this world. So I pray that we have a meaningful Christmas and we have that day when we celebrate God's love. We have a meaningful Christmas and we have that day when we celebrate God's love for the humanity, God's love for the world, and the possibility of understanding God afresh in our life. So may God bless you, and may God enable you to have a very meaningful Christmas. Where is God when we need him? Where do we look for God? Let's see God with a human face.
that is the message of Christmas. Let's affirm what God created us to be. This is the world that God so loved. Christmas, an affirmation of this world. Dear Right Reverend John Perimbalat, thank you for sharing your thoughts and message this evening. We now have a foot tapping, finger snapping, a cappella to further stir up and liven the Christmas spirit this evening. For that star to Bethlehem, 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 for that star to Bethlehem. Celebrating the promise of God being fulfilled in the birth of our Savior, the gladness and rejoicing is hardly containable, which is best expressed in our next Malayalam song, Kudidam Nam Anandamai.
of king would come so small from glory to a humble stall Jesus Jesus precious one a manger throne for God's own son Chief Guest, Right Reverend Dr. John Primbalat, Reverend John Kiss, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me take this moment to thank our Almighty for allowing us to con congregate here today and being with us since we started our program of the day until now. I, on behalf of Harmony in Christ, Ms. Carwell would like to express our great attitude, uh, gratitude to Right Reverend Dr. John Primbalath, Bishop of Bradwell, the first Anglican bishop from our Syrian Christian community. Thank you for the efforts towards 
your valuable presence and the meaningful message you have delivered to us today. We all are inspired by your words. Thank you again. We all are also very great, grateful to Reverend John Guest, Rector of St. Margaret's Parish, who wholeheartedly allowed, allowed us the venue for our use and, um, and his cardiac guests also for commencing the service with opening prayers. Thank you. A big thanks to Ms. Janice, the office administrator of St. Margaret's Parish, who sponsored, supported us in, in organizing the venue of the evening. Thank you. I would express our thanks to Mr. Abraham Matthews, a distinguished, respected, and enthusiastic member of our community for the closing prayer. As we, um, and we also acknowledge our gratitude to Gash, Gasham TV for recording and will be airing our program on Christmas Day. Thank you to the organizers, videographers, and all other members. Especially acknowledgement to Mr. Binu Josh, who is the chief program coordinator of Gasham TV, who is present today. We thank you also, uh, Mr. Srinath Vijayan from Jazz Love Digital for sound system recording and organize the, organizing the stage for the event. Let me take this opportunity to thank each and every parish members of St. Margaret Ch Church, our friends, families, and all well-wishers of Harmony in Christ for joining us today evening. A big thanks to Lindsay, for the beautiful way of presentation, and it was wonderful. Thank you, Lindsay. Without a dedicated leader, no event can be a success. I will take this opportunity to express the entire choir members' gratitude to Mr. Georgie Joseph for the time, time, effort, dedication towards teaching and guiding us for this wonderful event. And finally, all members of Harmony in Christ with her God-gifted, beautiful voices and dedication put into, put into this event, bringing this program really wonderful. Thank you, everyone. And thank every, each and every person who really helped us for this event, and hope, hope you all enjoyed the event. And thank you. Glory to God. Thanks. Let us all join together and sing the final song of the evening, Silent Night. Holy Night.
invite Mr. Abraham Matthews for the closing prayer, following which I request Right Reverend John Perimbulat to give the final benediction. Shall we bow our head in prayer? Father, we thank you for having opened up the St. Margaret Church, such a beautiful old church that still continues to glorify thy name, to praise thy name, and to reveal thy kingdom. At this particular moment, we especially think of our parents, our forefathers, who revealed to us the truth about your kingdom, about you being born, coming down to earth, suffering for us, and telling us, this is your home, it is beautiful. Father, we acknowledge it is beautiful. You left us with virtues that is impossible to be done by human hands, human minds. You have asked us to smile at times of despair when everything around us collapses, you told us, I leave you my peace. We hold those words in our hearts, O oh Lord, and that is keeping us going. You told us, when you're hit on the left cheek, give your right cheek. Father, we pray that you will give us the strength and the conviction to carry on and do thy preaching thy, the truth of thy kingdom. We thank you for all the people over here who are here today. On a Saturday when they should have been out there in the commercial world enjoying themselves, they have remembered the importance of proclaiming you having been born at this time of the period to be our Lord and Savior. Father, we worship you we glorify you and we praise you. We thank you for the, pro for the trouble that the choir have taken. What a melodious heavenly voice it was. What a way they have displayed your kingdom. We could see and feel the angels flying around, Father. This certainly is a beautiful, beautiful world. May we walk out today with a renewed sense of peace with a renewed sense of hope in this beautiful world of yours and proclaim to the world that you are Lord and Master in everyone's life and you came down here to save one and all. May our words and our actions always reflect your kingdom, Father. And may they all see Christians walking out of the church, smiling away. And may they wonder, why are these people smiling so much? There must be something good. There must be some truth. Father, yes, you are our Lord and Master. We pray that you'll be with us this time. And we pray for this particular church, the members in this congregation. May they continue to reveal that God exists over here. God lives over here. And we thank you again for giving them the heart and mind to open this church for these beautiful singers of yours. As we depart this evening, we pray that you will go with us and that we might reach our destination, look up into the heavens and thank thee for all of thy graces and glory, for all of thy provisions in our lives. Father, we pray that you'll bless every one of us and may the following year, 2019, be as beautiful as, it, as 2018. And may we forget all about the woes of the world and only look at the sunshine that comes out from heaven. Thank you again, Father, for making us a very special people in your life. We are a privileged people. We are your children. When we continue to uphold thee and to hold thy hand wherever we go. Bless every one of us here, now and always. Amen. May the love of God surround you. The peace of God rule over you. The presence of God watch over you. 
and all the saints and angels of God grant you communion and fellowship. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Thank you.